إني ألقى الإيناس في صومي وصلاتي ودعائي للرحمن وجميع الطاعات. Do you know what? No, no, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Yeah? yeah. There's a lot of talk about. Um, I'm Muslim. Yeah. There's a lot of talk about how Muslims uh, perceive homosexuals, how they interact with them, and whatnot. Yeah. Or bisexuals, like you probably might maybe associate with that. But I'm just saying, the reason why I feel it's important for us to have discussions, yeah. okay, is to, to basically clear the, to, to give people understanding that of what we actually believe. Yeah. And also so that we can maybe, like, actually flesh out some key issues. Yeah. You see what I mean? Because I think the, the most important thing from both of our perspectives, genuinely, is to understand each other. Yeah. We might not agree with everything we do, yeah? We're, we're, it's, it's, a, it's not going to be uniformity. We don't live in a world where we're all going to be the same, but it's about understanding. You understand where I'm coming from, and you understand where you're coming yeah. from, right? So where are you coming from? Okay, let me see where I'm coming from. First of all, I want to ask you a, uh, a straightforward question, yeah? yeah? So, first of all, let me tell you something before I ask you something. Okay. We, as Muslims, yeah. there's a principle, there's a maxim in the Quran, which is, sorry? we'll do another one. We'll do another one. Okay. There's a maxim in the Quran, yeah, which says, "La So the, 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 uh, a soul is not given more than what it can handle, yeah. Yeah. So if someone has a feeling of homosexuality, yeah. Yeah, so I'm saying like if a Muslim, he feels like oh, attracted or sexually attracted to the op to the same gender, yeah. Yeah. As Muslims, we say, at that point, it's not sinful. Yeah. Because based on that maxim, do you see how that works? Sorry, what was the maxim in English? So the, so the thought of being gay is not sin. So basically, if you're, like, if, I, if any human being, like yourself yeah. or whatever, yeah? If you feel yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. physically but, but what attracted, was the, what was the maxim again? it's uh, basically a soul is not, or a human being, yeah. a self is not given a more... Uh, than it can handle in terms of ability. So if, if you can't control yourself and it's just something that's within you, yeah, and you're feeling like, oh, you know, I'm attracted to the same gender, yeah? yeah. Sometimes you can't necessarily, like, you know, control that. You see what I mean? Yeah. So if that's the case, you're not sinful for feeling like that. Yeah. Because Islam doesn't hold you to account for how you feel. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. But let me be clear as well, yeah? Because yeah. I don't want to sugarcoat everything and lie. I want to also be honest with you, yeah? yeah. Islam... When it comes to homosexuality, it forbids homosexuality in a sexual sense. Yeah. Yeah? So what I mean to say when I say that is that, say for example, a man wants to want to have sex with another man. Yeah. Okay. So we would say that's morally not a right thing to do. It's not a good thing to do. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, if he feels good when he sees a man, all right? So it's morally, it's, so it's a wrong thing for a human being to do. It's to have sex with another man. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Um, according to the Quran. According to Islam and Quran, yeah. But where does it say, where does it say that? Does all right, it? so yeah. Do you know it's interesting? Because you know in the, in the, in the biblical uh, corpus, yeah, you have Lot. In Islam, you have Lot, who is the same person, yeah? The stories are different. It's not the same story completely, but there, there are some similarities. When Lot came to his people, they were homosexuals. Yeah. Okay, so that his people were homosexuals. He was guiding them to truth on two different fronts. He said to them, the first thing he would say to them is stop being homosexual. In terms of having sexual intercourse with other, other men. He actually, I looked at the Quran myself, I did a bit of a study, yeah. and I looked at the, I think, nine mentions of when Lot approached his people. And he's the only prophet that I can identify that he spoke to his people and he didn't start off by talking about Tawheed, which is the idea that one God is one. He actually always started by speaking to them about sexual, uh, like, stop, being, stop having sex with men. Men don't have sex with men. That's what basically he's saying. Yeah? Now, the reason why I would say, I, I think this is the argument now. Like in, in the West, they say, look, man, that's okay. You can have that belief. That's fine. But, and you probably agree with this, yeah? Say, we believe in the West here that so long as you're not harming anyone else, yeah. you can do whatever you want. Is that, would you agree with that maxim? Um, yes, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no. Yeah. As long as you're not harming. So long harming. as you're not harming anyone else, you can do whatever you want. Well, you have to. Don't shoot Mel, huh? Don't shoot Mel. 
Yeah, John Stuart Mill is an English philosopher and he I talks know. about the harm on principle. On liberty, the harm yeah. principle. Yeah, yeah. You guys learn politics or something. What did yeah. you do? PPE students. What did you do? Politics, philosophy and economics. Where? What are you doing? Goldsmith. We're going into second year. Yeah. Are you in second year? Yeah. Trust me, guys, man. I've done it all before as well, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it all before, man. That's yeah. why I bet you guys know what I'm talking about. John Stuart Mill, the harm principle. Yeah. Yeah? yeah well, and he obviously furthered from what Ben, if you remember, his father was close friends with whom? Bentham, yeah? yeah and he grew up, Jeremy Bentham was a utilitarianism. So he, he realized that utilitarianism had like the issue of the harm, the, uh, like it caused harm. So he put a cap on that, or he kind of refined the theory of utilitarianism with what he called the harm principle, if you remember like from your studies, yeah? Do you know what? Let me ask you a question then, yeah? Test your knowledge. All right, go on. We'll test your knowledge. Wait, you wrote, I'm not you testing your knowledge. She wrote the essay on uh, joke. I'm also the bisexual here as well. Are you bisexual as well? All right, fine. There's two, yeah? So, okay, let me ask you a question straightforward, yeah? Do you accept... Do you think, if I said to you, look, all things aside, a mother and a son, they can wear protection, all right? They wear protection and stuff. Mother and a son. Might get into, involved into a sexual relationship. Do you consider that morally acceptable? Um, I... No, no, I wouldn't. Because uh, their mother is... Is an older. I think age comes into it. I think the the mother is a guardian of the the son, and is responsible. Um, go on. It's the power play between them. So it's like I wouldn't think it's okay for a teacher to have. A, a but if they're all, if they're both uh, consensual. If they're both, even if they're both consenting, I wouldn't think it's okay for a teacher to have sex with a pupil because of the power dynamic that exists between them. The same with the mother and the son. There's a power dynamic there. I think. I think. I think if the son, if the son, if the son had reached the age of eighteen, which in England we agree there is an age for sexual consent and like you're an adult now and you can raise your voice just a little bit raise, huh? your, voice. raise your voice just a little bit um, yeah Sorry. if 18 is the age of sexual consent you can make a decision as an independent adult yeah. um, you have to have sex with whoever you want um, therefore if a mother and an 18 year old decided to have sex then I would consider it very strange. So you wouldn't accept it? You say it's immoral, yeah? Uh, or a father and a, I say grand, a granddad and his granddaughter, but they both, like, the granddaughter is over the age. Um, <laughs> but my, my issue is it isn't that they're related, it's the power dynamic that exists between... Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, I'm listening to your point. I think you've made a good point, actually. Like, it's an interesting point. Because whatever age someone is, there's still going to be power relations between the but, two okay. individuals. I'm, I'm accepting what you're saying now. But what I'm saying is that if we're accepting that the maxim that we're being morally consistent with is the, is the harm principle, it, the maxim basically that you can do whatever you want so long as you don't harm anyone else, yeah. then I feel it would be a contradiction of that harm principle if we said, okay, you have one rule for homosexuals and a different rule for those people who, have, who practice incest. Because actually, but are you saying that incest is the same as homosexuality? What I'm saying is, can I ask you a question? Yeah, question. What, would, what would be in your minds the difference between incest and homosexuality? Because incest exists in this power dynamic that I explained, that like mothers have power over their sons and like... But and, the power and the responsibility, and to, responsibility okay. to bring them up. So can I tell you something, Kia? Yeah? Yeah. The things that you've mentioned... And, and also... And there's a but lot, I'm with you, there's no power dynamic. There's inherent yeah? love and there's an inherent connection. Right. So it's due, to that, due to element. that relationship. Yeah. Do you think there's a naturalistic element yeah. which makes it like naturalistically unacceptable? There's, there's a bond in which demands a certain responsibility from the older guardian. Okay, can I tell you something? I'll be honest with you. Yeah. The, this power dynamic issue is, is an issue which is... First of all, sometimes, if you've done, if you've done, poly, if you've done uh, philosophy and PPE and stuff, yeah? So I can tell you that you've got... I remember doing this when I was in uh, uni as well, yeah? But I finished. Yeah. Uh, do you guys remember, like, doing power? Like, did you, did you cover, like, theor theories of power? Uh, Robert, uh, Robert Dahl, his conception of power, uh, back, back rats and barrets. Do you know? Have yeah, you not done that? All right, so basically there are different conceptions of power, yeah? Uh, from, a, from a philosophical perspective, it's difficult to actually track what power is. Robert Dahl, he said that power is the ability for person A to change person B's ability to do what he otherwise doesn't want to do, something like that. Then there's a second layer of power, which is back racks and barracks, they advance on the etc. So first of all, when we talk about power dynamics, and obviously from a philosophical perspective, you've got Michael Foucault, 
who talks about power in a yeah. in a very complicated but, way. But yeah? it's very possible to have someone that is under the age of consent, cons like in theory consenting to having sex with someone much older than them. So they're both technically saying, yes, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's not but what I'll say okay. To you is that power, it's in and of itself as a concept, as a construct, is a very difficult thing to define. And that's yeah. why you've got so many different people defining it in different ways. Michael Foucault, back Gretchen Barrett, Robert, Robert Duff. Now, what I'll say to you that, so using this uh, construct, which is power, to um, to deem something as um, immoral is, is, is basically arguing in a circle because first you'd have to prove that it exists in a certain way and then you'd have to identify how this power exists in a certain relationship. Do you see what I mean? So, but I would say this. I would say that, I'll be completely honest with you. From an atheist, you guys would you could consider yourself like non-religious, yeah? So like, not, you don't believe in the higher source, yeah? I do, I do believe in something that underlies everything. So would you, okay, fine, I'm with you, but you don't believe in God. I um, I haven't sort of <laughs> I haven't established I haven't established what this underlying something is, but but he may be God, but he's a multiplicity of some kind. Okay, I'm with you, but can I tell you something? Yeah? If you don't believe in God, my question to you would be, yeah, straightforward question: Where do you derive your morals in terms of objective morality? Do you think you can get objective morality without? an all-knowing, all-wise entity oh, that can dictate I them think, for you. I think, I think objective knowledge can um, can still be sort of apparent to me through this sort of rationale of and reasoning between individuals, which is like this underlying something. It is an underlying unknown big other that we are none the wiser to. So you're not completely dismissing the fact that there could be an entity out there that's yeah. like that, right? Yeah. I'm with that. But what I was going to say to you here is, um, this is my... But just like, just like you know, science bases itself on objective knowledge. Yeah. yeah well, I'm not, I mean, to be, to be honest with you, the scientific method doesn't, uh, doesn't do that because the scientific method itself, it gives you it gives you certain knowledge that you can rely on a certain time period, but yeah. then that can be falsified yeah, no, later on. Yeah, of course, on. of yeah. course, but as it's we... It's not certain truth, though. Yeah, yeah, it's not certain truth, but um, I, I feel like, you know, in different se se situations, you reason different outcomes to um, the certain outcomes that you want, right? Yeah. Like, if, if you're under threat, you wouldn't behave in the same way as if you were unthreatened. I'm with you, but what my, my point to you is, like, have you guys read Nietzsche yet? Nietzsche. Yeah? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What book have you guys read? Uh, Beyond Good and Evil. Beyond Good and Evil. Do you know how hard that is to read? Have you seen that read? No, no, don't. I mean, don't, don't I mean it's difficult book to read. Don't test me on it. Don't test me on it. I'm not going to test you on it. We can't do any quotes right now. But it's a difficult book to read. You agree, yeah? yeah? It's like The Gay Science. You wrote another book called The Gay Science. All right. Nietzsche, people like Nietzsche, people like um, Bertrand Russell, philosopher, atheist, people like uh, Derrida, Jackie yeah. Derrida, you know him. These are these are postmodernists, yeah. Yeah. So basically, they 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 don't believe that uh, objective morality exists. Yeah. I, so I would agree with that. You would agree with that, yeah? yeah? I would. So if I said to you objectively, can you prove that homosexuality is a sin? You say no, you can't. Yeah, you can't prove it's objectively a sin yeah. from your perspective. Yeah. But can you prove it's it's a good thing to do? No. And the same thing with it. But I I believe that I can prove it's a good thing to do in the sense that I feel loved, I feel yeah. empowered, I feel like it gives me a sense of belonging and I think that through expressing my homosexuality I've been, been able to be a more authentic version of myself and you. give more to society I, I, I so I think I can prove in a sense that it's you, objective do you, do you not think that because objective morality has a very it's certain philosophical connotation. Yeah, I guess, I guess the struggle is that I don't really believe in that many things that are objective and no matter what situation you're in, it is objective. Sorry. But at the same time, I could give you anecdotal and like just real life experiences that have proven to myself okay. and many other so people. So that's all subjective then, yeah? Yeah, it's subjective. So you can, okay, that's fine. I'm not saying but that you're subjective. It's only subjective because yeah. I don't believe in objective morality and I don't believe there's a right but way I'm to not, live I'm your life. I'm not saying to you that's wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying to you that you're not entitled to that. Okay, you're right. I'm, no, genuine, no, no, I'm not saying fine. that, yeah. but I'm just saying that. So it's very difficult for us here, from a non-objective perspective, to actually condemn anything mor morally. Mm -hmm. So even if I say, because you said that it causes me love and this and that, like I feel, hom I'm, you said my homosexuality makes me feel X, Y, Z. Yeah, I'm saying to you that Hitler might felt good when he was sorry, but like when he was doing what he was doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that the because of that feeling that that necess that necessarily means that what he's doing is moral. But, but yeah. Hitler might have felt good, but at the same time killed millions of people. I feel good and like I'm not stopping anyone else from So going back there. to the harm principle. Yeah. yeah. Can we prove that liberalism is true? Objectively. Huh? You know liberalism? The the one that we described by John Stuart Mill yeah. on liberty. You know the book? Yeah. Right? <laughs> 
Can we prove that that, ideo that ideology is a true ideology? Objectively. Um, no. You guys, this is a good, this is a good discussion, don't you think? All right. Okay. Let me say. No. Okay. Listen, guys. I want to say something. Yeah? So I say to you the following thing. Yeah? Two points I made to you that I want to be, I want to reiterate. When it comes to the issue of homosexuality, I said to you, look, why do you do you accept that? So long as you can do whatever you want, so long as you don't harm anyone else, yeah. I mean, it's hard to measure that. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But you said you accept that as a, as a maxim. No, uh, yeah, I accept it in theory, but at the same time, but I. But you don't say it's an objective maxim. No, no, no it's not an objective right, maxim yeah. at all. But you because accept it because it's impossible it... to to measure how you, the ramifications of how you behave right. affecting other people. Fine, I'm with you. Yeah. So you you accept it as an objective maxim. What I'm saying to you right here and right now is that, first of all, we're not being able to prove that. We can't prove that, and you know that, right? We can't prove that it's an objective maxim. But even if we applied that objective maxim and we, we put it into practical usage, we realize that you'd have to allow incest to occur. And you said you don't like it for naturalistic reasons. But what I'm saying to you is that those creationists who make the same... I, I find it problematic that you think that incest and homosexuality are very... Can I ask you the question, like, what is the difference? Like, why is it a false, why is it a false comparison? Because incest is, um... Why is it a false comparison? It's, it's an act that involves, like, very complicated power dynamics of mothers and children sort well, of thing. I told you before that the word power has philosophical connotations which you have to unpack and people de define it differently. So Michael Foucault, Robert Dahl, and, yeah. you know, Backcracks and there's Barrett. A, there's a lot of ambiguity in the sexual attraction. There's a lot of ambiguity in the way we relate to each other. Like, it's... it's it, but can I tell you what I think, yeah? I think the reason why homosexuality is accepted and incest is not as accepted yeah. is because in the 1960s and 70s, yeah. you had a movement of homosexuals that yeah. came out publicly demanding rights and that was listened to by society and it became the social norm. Okay. Had you had the same movement for, incest, for no, people no, that no, practice it incest... Happen. It didn't happen. You're, you're, you're hypothet it's a hypothetical no, but, situation. But and, no, no, but it's, we talk about individual freedom. Yeah, like, yeah, we talk about... But, why, but then again, the, the person that wants to be in an incestuous relationship should have his individual freedom as well. Yeah, yeah, of course, but okay, you can talk about sort of universalizing. Okay. Are you, you with me now? Do yeah, you see where no, I'm coming no, from? No, 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 I, I see where you're coming you see from, from. But <laughs> there's there's a problem because What's the problem? as I said, like when you asked me, do you have a problem with incest? I said if some if someone is of age, if they were 18 years old, I say 35. They both the the, the boys the man is a 35 year old man, big man like me, I wouldn't, and the mum is like you know uh, 55, okay, and they want to okay. get into an incestuous relationship okay. together. I wouldn't say that was morally wrong. Okay, so I, now you've protected. No, 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 because I, no, I didn't. No, but I would say it's it's very strange because. But but that's just your value judgment on it. Yeah, because, it's my value because judgment because they knew each other. Like the mother knew them as a child, so, and they were. So a child to them and they're still a child but, so, and the idea so of adults having sex with children so what? I view as morally No, but wrong. they're not children anymore he's 35 but okay, the... like, like um, Woody, Woody Allen Woody Allen um, adopted a child she grew up to when she hit 18 he started getting with her and he, then he ended up What's marrying wrong with her that? I genuinely don't think anything is wrong with that okay, okay. what's wrong with that what is it? She's not his. She's not even his. Daughter. I know, I know, but it... but I don't think the relationship there is an, an a relationship of equal power or but, a relationship. But, but remember what we said oh, about okay. power. Okay, right, I'm going to stop using the word power because that's the only thing you have to cut me down on. Okay, I don't think the relationship there is one that views the two people as like equal people because but, the mother the mother has taught the son or the father has taught the daughter. This is how you should live your life. But equality is a, is once again you can't prove that objectively, can you? I can't prove anything to you objectively because okay. I don't really believe in objective truth. So oh. that, it's kind of like a non-point. I can't prove okay. you objectively right. anything. I get, I get your point. All right, so do you see, okay, what I'm saying to you is the following, yeah? yeah? That we have to be, whatever paradigm we want to work within, we have to be morally consistent, yeah? I'm a, so look, I'm a Muslim. Yeah. The, the, what I believe in is that basically God, yeah, he had, there were prophets that came before time that God revealed a message that he is singular, he's one, etc, etc, to all these prophets. And that these prophets came with two things. They came with an evidence base and they came with a message. The message was that he was one, God is one, etc. Um, and that you have to obey God. That's the message. In that message, so we, there's basically God's expectations we have to be. In that message, I'm saying to you that we believe that homosexuality, the act of penetration, sorry to be <laughs> graphic. 
Well, if you're a girl, what about you? Is it still like... You can't have penetration if you haven't two you, girls you, having sex. Uh, you can if you use some I mean, you can. But if you don't have penetration really the two girls having sex, is right. it morally wrong? It's morally wrong as well. We, we, say, we say that. Yeah, we say basically... But, but why? If, it, if it's the act of penetration, why... The, the question of why, the answer of it is a straightforward question. The paradigm is that God knows best, yeah? Sure. Yeah, so the God, God knows best, so he's telling saying, us it's, it's, it's wrong. But if you're saying the act of gay sex is wrong because of the act of penetration... No, no, it's not that. So, um, why is the act of gay sex... Why is it wrong? Yeah. The, the answer from our paradigm is because God said so. And God is all-knowing. And that's objective morality. Therefore, everything that comes from an objective moral perspective is, is what we follow. But, even if you wanted to use your, your own words against, because you did mention natu naturalistic things, yeah? You said that incest is uh, unnatural, yeah? I didn't say that. Well, I think we agreed upon that at some stage, but we, would, we could use that very same argument against, against homosexuals. I, I didn't know. But, uh, but homosexuality exists in so many different species, it existed throughout the whole of time. Fine. So does, so does uh, murder. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not no, saying that you're a murderer. I think, I, think I, it's hard, I think it's hard to argue, argue that it's unnatural if it exists in like penguins. Penguins, right. penguins don't like make moralistic decisions. They All make right. naturalistic decisions. So because they don't make a moralistic still. decision. Remember our maxim that they don't get charged for that. <laughs> Do you know that the penguin, if he decides to enjoy his uh, another penguin, a uh, male one, uh, and it was a male penguin, then he doesn't. But look, I tell you what, yeah, I I really respect where you guys are coming from because I feel like no, you. I do you know, like, I feel like you've understood my argument. Yeah. yeah? No. So now when you meet, can I tell you one thing? Yeah? I, I do think that there is some kind of extremism in the Muslim world. I believe that. And I'll tell you, I've done some research and you'll be shocked at the research I found. There's both extremism and hypocrisy in the Muslim world. What? Calm down over there. No, 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 no. It's true, yeah? There's extremism no, exists yeah, in the following I, yeah, way. Do you know, we as Muslims, the number one thing in the Quran, it says the following. Listen to this, yeah? In chapter number four, verse 48. It says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru ayyu shraka bihi. Ali wants to talk to you. Have you got his keys? Okay, wait. No, I don't have Give it, sorry. Keys. I don't have his keys. He's got, he hasn't got your keys. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different guy. It says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru ayyu shraka bihi. Wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika lima yasha. Just there. Yeah. God says, sorry, 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 I'm sorry about this. It says that God doesn't allow that you do shirk with him. Shirk is like um, believe, giving the rights of God to any other than God, yeah? That's what shirk is. So saying that God is someone else worthy of worship or something else, yeah? Then God. But he forgives everything else to whoever, whoever he wants, yeah? So from that angle, the worst thing for us, the worst sin, the cardinal sin like in Islam, is shirk. That's number one. Then b beyond that is like kufr, which is a kind of like, you know, kufr is disbelief, disbelieving in, in a message when it's come to you, yeah? Then below that, there are things like murder. Murder, the mur murder is there, yeah? According to Ibn Khayyim, one of our scholars that wrote a book called The Debt with the Wet, when he addresses the issue of homosexuality, he says, but uh, then after murder, after murder, below that, he says, I, he, in his opinion, he believes that the act of a man having sexual intercourse with another man is there. Right below murder, basically, yeah? So you've got shirk, kufr, but the point is, look, think about this. Those Christians that are walking around right now in Speaker's Corner, they're doing the number one sin for us. Yeah, because they, they believe that Jesus is God, yeah? Hindus that believe that Ganesh is God, he's got uh, eight arms, this, um, this God is God. They, they're doing a card worse sin than the, the homosexual, yeah? Uh, obviously a murderer is doing that, uh, as a worse sin. So, inshallah, we're gonna, yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna finish it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. So basically, uh, what I'm saying to you yeah, is that that doesn't. So, so I'm, when I see a Christian, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything. To, I'm, I'm gonna speak to them like I've spoken to you today. Yeah. So I think the extremism exists here, yeah, but when people actually think that homosexuality is the, is the worst sin, it's not the worst sin. There's their sins that are worse than it in Islam, and it also exists in the way that some people, I think, they have a kind of. It's kind of like a fetish attitude towards homosexuals. Well, if you feel like that with homosexuals, you should feel like that with Christians and Jews, or, or, or not Jews, but Christians and, and, and uh, Hindus. They're doing what we believe is the worst sin, yeah? So I feel like free discussion and conversation, the one that we've had today, is, is a vitally important thing that we should do. Um, and that's think it's a point of agreement. Can, in your opinion, can like Muslims and homosexuals live side by side? Indeed. Oh yeah. Look, I mean, that's the thing is, yeah. This is, I think, the, one of the biggest misconceptions where people actually feel 
because of the things that's happened, yeah, uh, the like recent uh, incidents and whatnot, that we are out here to kill uh, civilians or something like that, or that we are out here to to to, to, to hurt homosexuals. Yeah. It's not what we believe in. So we don't believe in the Quran. It says in chapter two, verse two hundred fifty-six, "La ikraha fi din qad rustum al It says that there's no compulsion in religion. That the truth is very manifestly clear from the falsehood. So with that, I will conclude. But I, look, I'll, I'll tell you to do one thing, as if you don't mind, yeah. And uh, and I'll let you think about it. Can you do me a favor when you go home? Start reading the Quran. <laughs> I do, do want to read it. Read it, because if you're doing PPE, it. if you're doing PPE, yeah. you will get. You, I'll tell you what you guys are gonna have. You're gonna have a good insight in in the world because I've yeah. done a very similar course in uni, yeah. What did you do? Sorry. I done politics. I done politics, and I done a, I done a postgraduate in in uh, in history, and then things after that. But the point is, there was a lot of uh, like philosophy modules in that one, yeah. What you need, I think, what will make you an all-rounded person is not only to have idea of politics and philosophy, but also to have an understanding of at least the world, world major world religions. Like where are we coming from? So I, I know now where you're coming from. So you should know where I'm coming from. I'm not saying that you look. I'm not going to treat you in a in a in a in a bad way. I don't like people that you know, don't eat pork. I don't like uh, sorry eating pork, yeah. But I'm not going to any uh, go stand outside the Tesco's, yeah. Oh, this guy's got a uh, you know what I'm saying a uh, uh, what do you call it a beer can. Let's 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 rush him. Let's let's beat him up. No, we're not going to do that. It's not practically and uh, reasonably. That's not how we interact. Yeah. Our, our our method is rationalism. We believe in like intellectualizing it yeah. and speaking and let. And genuinely, not sugarcoating it, I'm not going to lie to you, but also I'm not going to treat you with any disrespect because that's not the way of the prophets. That's not what Lot did when he met the people. He said to the people, you know, basically abandon this act of homosexuality, abandon it. You'll feel that your life is probably going to get better, I'm honest with you. What if it doesn't? Uh, trust me, I'll tell you what, and what if it doesn't? I promise you, it will. But what if I felt worse being in the closet than out of the closet? Do you know what? It's not all about how you feel from a, from a sexual perspective. Can I tell you that? But not from a sexual perspective, in a sense of like me as a whole human being. I feel like I'm a more authentic version of myself if I'm honest about my homosexual feelings. Do you know what? You've got to ask yourself a question now. What is the purpose of life? Because if you answer that question properly, then you can answer why. what would be the most authentic version of you. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. You are authentic when you're doing your purpose. There's a basic human function. We've got to ask ourselves, what is that basic human function? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Well, it's been fantastic. I'm going to run now because I've got to pray and go to these guys. Well, thank you so much for everything, yeah? Brilliant. Fantastic, yeah? Thank you very much. Take care.